All righty. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. This is part two of the pre-kindergarten teaching strategies, um, materials release and getting started um, webinar. That's a long title for a webinar. And we are really glad that you joined us today. My name is Tamala Olsby. I am an educational specialist here at the Texas Education Agency. And I am joined by other people from TEA that will remain hidden, but I wanna give our guests from Teaching Strategies a chance to introduce themselves. Tim, you wanna go first? Certainly, thank you. Uh, my name is Tim Reed, and I'm the Director of Product Marketing at Teaching Strategies. Uh, I've been here uh, for more than 10 years now, um, and uh, I'm really excited to be here with you all today. Hi, everyone. My name is Brian Mack, and I'm our Vice President of Educational Content at Teaching Strategies, where I oversee the instructional design of our assessment curriculum and professional development resources. Um, just shy of Tim, I'm almost at my 10 year anniversary, uh, and I'm so excited uh, to be part of this conversation today to continue the conversation of our partnership with Texas and, and dig in a little deeper today. So thank you for having us. All righty, well, we're gonna dig right in. If you'll go ahead and advance the slide, I wanted to briefly go over our agenda for this afternoon. We're gonna have an overview, obviously, of the teaching strategies solution for Texas. And we will, um, Brianne and T, uh, Tim will easily be able to go through how to get started, how to access the materials, They'll give you information to help you self-enroll. And then we're gonna end our time together talking about some upcoming coming trainings and a pilot that you might want to become a part of. So we've got good things on the agenda today. And our next slide will show you some frequently asked questions that we get asked. Here are the top three. So when are we going to be able to get to these materials? And the answer is today. So that's a great, um, uh, that's a great piece of news for the today. And then the next question is, how long will all these materials be um, free to LEAs that decide to use them? And the answer is for Texas, there is a free three-year license that will go all the way through November of 2023. So we're excited about that. And then last but not least, we always get questions on how this is connected to the Proclamation 2021. And as you know, districts are able to choose which instructional materials they adopt for each of their grade levels. And none of that has changed. But now districts can choose to adopt all or none or parts of teaching strategies, pre-kindergarten learning solution for Texas this year and also for the next school year up until November, 2023 um, at no cost. So that's one of the big differences. So that's going to get us started. Brianne, I think you're on now. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Tamala. I wanted to start um, by just acknowledging that we had another webinar a couple of weeks ago where we really jumped in in partnership with THL initiative to look at this rubric of you know what the, the goals were and measures of success of what TH will look THL would look like in partnership with us. So if you haven't had a chance yet, and even if you're listening to this in a recording in the future, um, you might want to pause here and, and make sure that you're thinking listen to that first webinar because uh, that's really going to lay some foundational context for you of who we are at teaching strategies and dig a little deeper into what the different components and resources are aligned uh, to this rubric of measures. Uh, so today we're going to jump a little bit more into actually getting started but if you're looking for some more of that background information that first webinar will be really helpful. Okay, so let's dig in. 
Uh, so as Tamla mentioned, we are so honored at Teaching Strategies uh, to be partnering with Texas to bring really three elements of our Teaching Strategies solution set uh, to Texas. The Creative Curriculum Cloud for Texas, which is our comprehensive whole child curriculum, our professional development, online professional development, a robust uh, online course catalog of professional development for you, and then GOLD, which is our whole child uh, observation-based formative assessment. Uh, so we're going to take a look at elements of what each of those solutions can look like for you uh, here today. Tim, if you want to flip to the next one, we know that the realities of every program right now is some inconsistency <laughs> and a question of, you know, what, what does short term, near term, long term actually look like for us? And we're having to challenge ourselves to plan for a lot of different possibilities. So we know across the state of Texas, some of you are fully distant, some of you are fully in classroom, some of you are working on a hybrid of both, others are doing one thing now, but knowing there's the potential as we've seen across the country of needing to shift and be dynamic to that. Uh, so you have our commitment at Teaching Strategies that the solutions we're sharing with you as part of THL were uniquely designed to adapt to all of those different possibilities. And so Tim and I, as we walk through these resources, will point out where we can elements of enhanced for distance learning or still working great for uh, that in classroom setting. But know that we are holistically looking at these resources to support you no matter where you find your instruction happening today and empower you with access to content that can flexibly meet uh, what some of those ever changing needs continue to be. So as a quick reminder from our last call, we wanna give just a little bit of foundational information. The term whole child is used a lot in early childhood. Uh, and it's important to, to me and the team at Teaching Strategies that we really define for us what that means and what it looks like within this solution. Uh, so four kind of key elements that drive our commitment to a whole child foundation when it, we come to instruction and even family engagement has to be student led. Right, so all the resources we'll look at are through student-led inquiry, um, through hands-on play-based learning, whether that's happening in the classroom or at home. We know we need to prioritize um, really play-based hands-on exploration and learning for children. At the same time, the skills and knowledge uh, need to be differentiated, right? We've got to be individualizing our approach for every child and every family uh, to get to the most maximized growth. Social skill development has to be in every interaction. And this is not just our direct instruction, but every interaction informally with families and throughout our day in read alouds, in math experiences, really this driving force of social skill development being such an anchor and everything we do to strengthen those relationships. And then lastly, a seamless connection between home and school. This is important pre-COVID, it's very important during COVID, and will remain uh, a strong priority even on the other side of all this when we find ourselves all returned back to classrooms. One of the positives that I think can come of this last year is this renewed commitment and understanding of what true family partnerships look like. And um, we'll take a look at how we can support you with that. Next, Tim. Uh, so 38 objectives for development and learning that cover the development of the whole child, social, emotional, cognitive, language, literacy, mathematics, they're all there. What I know is important to the folks listening on the phone is these are 100% aligned to the Texas pre-kindergarten guidelines. We wouldn't even be invited to be part of this conversation if they were not. Uh, it's no surprise that when we look at something like social emotional development, we can see the strong correlation. We're looking at the same research. We're following those same um, pedagogical approaches to making sure that we're focusing on self-regulation, uh, relationships with others, both peers and adults. Um, so you'll see kind of just a quick example here. We have a published document that shows this full alignment, uh, but want you to just have that anchor of security at all of the resources we're getting ready to look like that they're rooted in that 100% alignment um, of Texas pre-kindergarten guidelines to the objectives that uh, you'll also see frequently referenced throughout the curriculum. What we, the objectives to development and learning can bring to that conversation with TPGs is a progression of development and learning. So not just looking at the whole child in terms of all of those areas of development, we're looking at that full progression of development, birth through third grade. So as a Texas pre-kindergarten educator, that blue color band in our resources is gonna represent the research-based widely held expectation for pre-K-4 and aligned to the Texas pre-kindergarten guidelines, uh, which we'll take a look at in a second. Oh, perfect. 
Um, so what you'll see here is the Texas pre-kindergarten guideline aligned to our uh, 20C, connects numerals with quantities, that Texas pre-kindergarten guideline specifically is talking about recognizing one digit numeral zero to nine. That aligns to the end of our blue color band uh, where we're talking about children identifying numerals to 10 by name and it connecting those to those counted objects. Um, but you can also see as a teacher how you could individualize your instruction approach to be a more precursor skill of just recognizing a few um, of those numerals all the way towards seeing this foundation we're building in pre-K to set children up for success of what those third grade progressions uh, and expectations will look like. So you'll see these color bands referenced uh, frequently uh, across our solution. So we dig a little bit more into that in the last webinar, but wanted to ground us in a quick refresher here. All right, so for today, uh, we, Tim and I and some other colleagues uh, at Teaching Strategies were really thinking about the unique setup we have here with Texas right now, that this isn't the beginning of an academic school year, right? We recognize that we're heading into the middle to end of December, coming back fresh after the new year, you likely already have a lot of systems in place uh, to be engaging with families remotely or thinking through your curriculum and instruction. Uh, so we wanted to organize today's kind of walk through the system, really taking that uniqueness into account <laughs> of offering some suggestions and some different ways that you may get started in a more gradual way within the system. Uh, as Tamla mentioned, we'll have some robust training starting in January that will dig into full fidelity and comprehensively look at every element of this. But today our goal was really just to give you some ideas of when you sign up today and when you start to log in in the coming weeks that you've got some really targeted places to jump in and start to get comfortable. So we're going to explore the digital content library where you can see digital access to all of the content that you'll have. We're going to show you a feature where you can actually search a lot of that content by Texas pre kindergarten guidelines and jump right in to solve some of those immediate uh, concerns you may be having for content. I'm going to ask you to check out a study um, and take a look at what project based investigations really might look like in action. We'll get some very curated and targeted family plans in our at home guided learning plans. Tim will show us a back and forth uh, real time two way communication app. Uh, and then we'll round out by talking about access you'll have to professional development uh, that you can dig a little deeper into even what we're talking about today. So Tim, let's get started. So when you first log in uh, to My Teaching Strategies after you've signed up, which we'll show you how to do at the end of the call here, uh, you'll be taken to My Teaching Strategies. This is our My Teaching Strategies dashboard where you'll first be welcomed. Uh, and today we're going to kind of organize our demo through these different areas up at the top. So the first place I'm going to suggest you go is the library area. So that very first tab there. And within the library area is where you'll find what we call our digital content library. And there'll be digital bookshelves of all of the resources that I, I really dug a little bit deeper into in our last webinar. So you'll have foundation volumes that give you all that rich theory and best practice um, around all of those areas of development and sort of our pedagogy and approach to curriculum and assessment. You'll find teaching guides, which will highlight those um, full comprehensive daily plans for an entire school year focused on project-based investigations. You'll find intentional teaching experiences intended for small group and direct instruction. You'll find Mighty Minutes, which are those songs, chants, games, and rhymes to use in transitions. You'll find our robust children's book collection, uh, so a really strong collection of nonfiction titles as well as some folk tales uh, and other fiction titles to share. Tim, let's actually just look at one of those for a second. Uh, Neighborhood, you can pick anyone you want, but Neighborhood Song is one of my favorites. Uh, these rich nonfiction titles, especially if you think of yourself in a distance learning solution right now, you don't need to know anything about creative curriculum or goal to just jump in and start singing songs with children. Um, so to be able to pull this up on whatever interface you're using, this is the way we live together, live together, live together, we can jump right in and start using some of these resources with children and families. Uh, so you'll find a, a wide collection of those um, throughout the system. Um, of, like I said, both fiction and nonfiction. And then you'll also, we won't go through each one, but the subsequent bookshelves or other family facing activities that you can share, some guidance for interactive repeated read alouds, and then some additional 
downloadable teaching resources um, of some letters to families, uh, some Mighty Minutes posters where you can bring some of these songs and rhymes up on your screen if you're teaching in a distance setting, uh, as well as some different uh, photos to help supplement your conversations virtually, and recipes uh, to share with families to engage in some uh, cooking and uh, recipe making together as a family. Uh, so this is where I would absolutely suggest you get started just to play around. <laughs> um, these are all readable versions to flip through a digital book. Um, and we'll come back to this a little bit later in the presentation, but this is a good place to just start grounding yourself in the kinds of resources that we can provide. This is a lot. <laughs> uh, so the other thing that I wanted to make sure we were talking about is how could you immediately start to rein in and find some activities that are targeted to real specific goals you have. Um, so when you pop over to the teach area, which is that very next area up at the top, teach under that teach area is where you're going to find a um, dynamic planning tool where you can make some decisions of what you're adding to your weekly and daily plan. Uh, so I'm going to show you how you can search by Texas pre-kindergarten guidelines to add some of those activities. So if we jump into a day, Tim's selecting add activity, selecting the day I want to add that activity, new just for Texas. <laughs> In addition to just searching through our full catalog of intentional teaching experiences in Mighty Minutes, you can focus in. And let's say we're looking for phonological awareness, Tim. I can jump into my reading area, jump into the TPG to, uh, let's look at rhyming. So 3.b.6, child recognizes rhyming words. When I select that, I'm then prompted with the collection of Mighty Minutes those songs, chants, and rhymes, real quick wins. Then I'm also populated with intentional teaching experiences, which are more of those structured small group moments that I see a full collection of all of the resources we have that have rhyming as either primary or related objective that I can add to my plan. So Tim will select rhyming riddles, and then it's gonna pull up, again, what we call an intentional teaching experience. You're gonna have anywhere from three to five steps of a research-based, fun, play-based activity to do. And then the bottom half of the experience are those color bands come back <laughs> that we just spoke about. This is how I individualize this rhyming riddles experience based on children's skill level. So when you first log into this system, all of the children that you'll set up in your class will just be tagged to that blue color band. Um, and that's the typically developing widely held expectation of that experience. But over time, you can use the system to get more meaningful insights as to where children's names populate along that sequence. So Tim, if you go up to the top, I can toggle over to the assess feature. Um, sorry, I always forget the step of the app to actually add it to your plan, as any good planner would do. Um, but then once that's on my plan, and I'm actually now in the moment where I'm offering instruction, I can see the Texas pre-kindergarten guidelines clearly there as Tim, Tim just highlighted. Again, not just the primary objective of rhyming, but we know as we're doing this experience, we're also seeing some related objectives of other Texas pre-kindergarten guidelines. I can toggle over to that assess feature. And here I'm prompted with two to three questions of what I likely just learned about children in this experience. So I can expand to 15a, was this child able to answer the riddle with the given clues? How many words was the child able to rhyme? And I see that progression again, specifically targeted for this experience, where I can come and make some assessment decisions. Bella, Nezi, Chate, Vivian, what did I observe and see here? I have subsequent questions related to peer relationships. Were they able to interact with their peers? There's social emotional learning here during this rhyming game as well. As I'm making these assessment decisions, when Tim saves that, the very next time I go to pull an experience with that objective, those children's names are now gonna be in a different place um, because it's being driven by this recent assessment information. The third component I wanna highlight on the intentional teaching experiences uh, is this family component. So every one of our 250 some odd intentional teaching experiences for Texas have a family equivalent. So we've taken that primary objective of rhyming, we've taken the context and the, the idea and thought behind this research-based activity, and we've created it, consolidated it to three to five bullets that take into consideration the materials that families would have access to and uh, the readability level of what they are uh, so that a teacher can immediately 
share this with families. They can add it to their plan to deliver in classroom or remote learning or share directly with families. I can quickly toggle to Spanish all of our family facing resources, all of our content, but in particular, as we're talking about now, um, our family facing resources are available in English and Spanish. And it's important to note that they're trans adapted. So in particular, something here like rhyming, that can't just be a direct translation into Spanish. We need to highlight different items um, and resources to make sure um, that we're having a strong, uh, respectful, culturally responsive translation there. So as Tim's gonna show now, I could just immediately share this with one or multiple members of my classroom. And Tim will share us a little later in the demo, how that then will show up in my family app as a mom to see this great rhyming game that I can easily play at home. So that's searching by Texas Pre-Kindergarten Guidelines. So even if you're not ready to take on a whole new curriculum situation because you've got a lot of that already planned and in place um, for January, Surely we all have student learning objectives or IEPs that we're planning for or specific families that have a targeted objective that they need support on. I would challenge you to think of some of those areas where you're hungry for some new refresh of content, songs, games, ideas, and being able to target really specifically to those Texas pre-kindergarten guidelines through that teach feature. If you're looking to learn a little bit more about the comprehensive set of curriculum resources though, we also have our teaching guides. So if we go back to that digital content library, those intentional teaching experiences, mighty minutes, everything we just talked about, they're agnostic of studies. They're just great standalone experiences that you can filter in to whatever curriculum experience that you're currently offering. If you are looking though to more comprehensively introduce the idea of project-based investigations and studies into your work, this is where you'll want to come. In the digital content library on that teaching guide shelf, you'll see a series of teaching guides that were designed for Texas that highlight four to six week project-based investigations of topics that are relevant and exciting to children. Boxes is my favorite. Any of you that have children, have worked with children or been at a birthday party, you know, the children in the preschool age in particular love boxes. And not only can you get creative and actually Tim, one of our colleagues posted a picture of her daughter working from her car today, which is just a big cardboard box of something I'm sure that got shipped for the holidays that she's turned into her home car space uh, for the day. So much creativity that happens with boxes, but also think about capacity and volume and angles and sides and three-dimensional, all the rich rigor that can come from the piles of recyclable boxes that families already have at home. Um, so see if one of these topics just jumps out to you when you come to this content library of what could be interesting for you or the children that you serve. I will highlight water in particular as well, because of the studies, water of course is something that is readily available and accessible to most every family that we're serving. Uh, it's just fun and takes very little prep of things to pull together and organize. <laughs> um, it's just water. Um, but in particular, the water teaching guide, we've included uh, extra support for teachers who may be doing studies for the first time. So any teaching guide you come to is going to have some introductory information that Tim's kind of moving through here um, around getting started with studies, but the water teaching guide in particular digs a little deeper of helping you understand what a teaching guide looks like and the kind of information that you'll find here. Every study has a web of investigation that comes out with those big concepts and big ideas to brainstorm the study. But then here where Tim is on a daily spread, uh, which are your facilitation notes for leading large group discussion and choice time and all of that. Uh, there's one dedicated call out every single day in water. That's a helpful tip for you to get to know studies. So if you're not someone who's done project based investigations or studies before, this is a really great one to, to start to take a look at um, and see how you specifically could start thinking about adding in study work uh, into your curricular experiences. One point I will dig into this far deeper um, in additional trainings that we'll have starting at the first of the year. But one thought I'll leave you with if you're going to go and explore this before those sessions is when you think about studies, try really hard not to think about them as a theme, right? So if I'm doing a study of water, it does not mean that everything I do every day for four weeks with children is going to be about water. I don't want to do that as an educator. Children are going to lose interest. It's don't think about it as becoming a theme. Think about it as water becomes this 
topic of investigation that brings a classroom community together every day through large group and through exploration and discovery together, but you're still doing small group, you're still doing read alouds, you're still doing um, activities at your interest areas or centers that may have nothing to do with water and are following children's other interests or your specific goals um, and interests as a program. So start off by just picking one of these and taking a look at it, um, seeing what's included and start to think about how it could come to life in your program. The next component is you can actually add these teaching guides to your daily plans. So just like we added a study and search by Texas Pre-Kindergarten Guidelines, you can go to that teach area, select a date to add a study. You'll see those same thumbnails that you saw in your digital content library, pick a study, let Tim pick his favorite. Uh, he's got water there. And then what that's doing is it's taking the high level plan for water and just pre-populating it on your daily plans. So you can see here, what are those materials to include in my interest areas if I'm in the home, in classroom setting? I can see my question of the day. I can see the focus of large group. I can see pre-planned for me, my small group and my experiences, my mighty minute songs for transitions and those in-between moments. That heavy lift, I always joke like, that's Sunday night. <laughs> We're giving your Sunday night back by pre-populating all this information with you. You can still go in and edit those tiles. Um, you can add new custom activities to this. You can choose not to do some of this. We, we are not a scripted solution at teaching strategies by any means, um, but we want to give that heavy lift a really rich um, content is a jumping off place for you. If you do go ahead and add a study on, you'll also see these little icons sprinkled on every day of looks like two little folks <laughs> in a box. Um, that's an icon that lets you know there's family facing content there. So where we looked at that on our intentional teaching experiences in Mighty Minutes, you know, just quickly at a glance, here's something you can quickly share home with families um, to either reinforce what you're doing in classroom or to help lead a lot of that instruction if you find yourself completely virtual. Anything I forgot to say there, Tim? So then the next component as we kind of are looking at those different areas at the top is the family area. So we just looked at what it's like for a teacher um, to add a study to their plan. We also really wanted to think of a way, knowing teachers have so much on their plates right now and need to spend that time to be planning for individual needs. We wanted to have something that teachers could quickly share home with the whole class that's already curated, pulled together content that would highlight play-based developmentally appropriate experiences at home. So in this family area, you'll find at-home guided learning plans uh, related to each of those study topics organized by investigation. Tim just selected water, that's the one we've been looking at. And each of these at-home guided learning plans are gonna be consistent in the pattern that they offer. So families can start to get really comfortable with what this looks like. There's four key elements to each day's at-home guided learning plan. The first is always gonna be about that study topic. We've taken what the intent of, of large group would have happened in a more typical classroom setting. And we thought about how could you replicate this at home? Um, so we've consolidated again to three to five bullets, thinking about the materials that families have readily available, spray bottle, a paintbrush, a pot, some sort of bath toy, um, and how we could start investigating what are the different ways that we use water in our home uh, and giving some guidance on some open-ended experiences to do together. The second component of every day is gonna be what we call a guided learning experience. That's actually pulling from whatever small direct group instruction would have happened during the classroom. We take that core objective, and then this one is around understanding spatial relationships, basically direction, position, location, uh, and we're giving the steps of how to replicate that experience at home. On the right hand side, you'll see a mighty minute every day, a uh, quick song, chant, or rhyme that mom can do during bath time, dad can do while he's emptying the dishwasher, um, while we're driving to go pick up another sibling. These are quick wins uh, to help families have learning experiences in ways that fit into what already is probably a pretty hectic schedule. 
And then the last component is something to consider. Um, think of this as a positive guidance or child development, almost like a parent coach on the shoulder. We know families don't have the benefit of the decades of experience that so many of us have uh, in this space that we wanna help point some of that out. Lastly, I'll point out on the at-home guided learning plans, there's also two call outs every day for suggestions of information for families to share back with the teacher based on whatever game or open-end experience they've done. As a former teacher, when COVID started, you know, thought about how important it was that teachers really still were grounded in children's development and building out portfolios and understanding their growth. And how are we doing that if we're not with the children ourselves? And obviously families need to share that information back. But I quickly became overwhelmed myself thinking about 20 different families interpretations of what I would find valuable as a teacher. And while anything a family wants to share with us is important, that could get really overwhelming really fast for teachers. So our hope is by giving these two prompts every day, we're really focusing in and refining the kinds of information that families are sharing back with teachers so it can be more actionable to lead to further individualized instruction and suggestions and more meaningful conversations with families. So even if you're not ready to start using studies or project-based investigations in your daily instruction, you could think about sharing this home with families to just get started with this kind of exploration and investigation of things like boxes and water and wheels uh, that are readily available at home. And our hope again is that while this is meeting a very specific need um, for distance learning, um, this was always an intent of an area of our product to have even once everyone's returned back to the classroom, instead of getting a, a grid of the highlights to really get the words of the songs that were sung and the questions that were talked about. Um, so families can truly feel like they're active participants in the learning that's happening in the classroom. So now I'm gonna pass it over to Tim, who's gonna show uh, the two-way communication tools where we can start sharing this information back and forth. So I'll turn it over to you, Tim. Great, thanks, Brian. Uh, so uh, with the access through the My Teaching Strategies uh, platform here, you're able to add family members to our system uh, using the Manage Family Members option. And with just their first name, last name, and email address, you'll be able to set them up. And at that time, they'll be able to uh, set up their account and download a free My Teaching Strategies family mobile app uh, on Android and Apple uh, uh, mobile devices. With that access, they'll be able to um, correspond with you in a direct back and forth communication that you as uh, teachers here will be able to manage and manage family communications. So if I select view messages here and select a child, I'll be able to see the complete back and forth history of communications on this platform between myself and uh, the family members for each child. So any activity that we've shared. So remember earlier in this uh, demonstration, we shared the activity from the teacher area. Well, that's appearing right here, but you'll also see any other previously shared activities, any messages or uh, pictures or photos or videos that you've sent with fam to family members, anything the family members have sent back to you, you'll see in this continuous conversation here. Uh, so if you have a new message uh, to send, you can type that in here. You can drag and drop files, pictures, videos, anything like that here and select send and that'll send your message to family members. Uh, family members will actually get a push notification on their mobile devices. Uh, and I'm going to quickly show you what that will look like on the My Teaching Strategies family mobile app. So I'm gonna pull up the app right now. And so here you're seeing uh, the My Teaching Strategies Family Mobile app. So you can see what the family member perspective would be. Uh, you see that new message that we just sent from the teacher side of My Teaching Strategies, that's here. But here I can access any of those shared activities, at-home guided learning plans, um, anything like that as well. So if I'm reading those at-home guided learning plans, perhaps I'm looking at those prompts that Brian just mentioned, those with the thumbtack uh, icons. That's me thinking oh, as a family member, I, I should uh, respond to the teacher uh, by answering those questions. So I can type in my responses here. Uh, perhaps I'm adding up my own pictures, videos, uh, other 
uh, documentation of what occurred while I was doing those activities with my child at home, I select send right on the app, very easy for family members to get information right back to the teachers as well. I'll toggle back to my teaching strategies uh, so that the teacher can see that new message from the family member. Uh, and just like that, the teacher is easily able to uh, go uh, correspond in that back and forth conversation with family members. And if they're seeing pictures, videos, messages from family members, that would be make great uh, documentation for children's knowledge, skills, and abilities uh, to inform perhaps the gold assessment a tool. Uh, they can, uh, you teachers can select create documentation next to any picture, video, message coming from families, select create documentation here, and that will take you to uh, the add documentation screen for gold with that picture, video, message already pre-filled here for you. So all you then would have to do is then tag the objectives and dimensions that correspond to the knowledge, skills, and abilities that ch ch child was demonstrating in that a uh, picture, video, note from the family members at preliminary levels. And now you're not only informing your gold uh, checkpoint, your assessment checkpoint, but you're also informing your instruction. So those teaching sequence that Brian was showing you on the intentional teaching experiences in the teach area, planning for those, this documentation from families is going to inform where this child's name uh, falls on that teaching sequence the next time you're planning for those uh, individualized experiences. Hi, Tim. Before we jump off of the family app, we did have um, one question that was directly related to this about uh, if uh, enrolling parents by student is necessary or if you have to use the family communication app to communicate with families or if there were other ways to share resources with them. So we we do think that the, the using the My Teaching Strategies family is a great way to, for you to get that back and forth conversation going and to inform gold documentation. But just know that anything that's family facing here in the system is also uh, printable, knowing that there is that digital divide, making sure that you have the ability to print any of those family activities or family plans uh, is important. So that is a possibility as well. And just to reiterate too, we showed on the first example, it is also all available in English and Spanish. So even those at-home guided learning plans, just by a quick toggle, you could share with some families in English, some in Spanish. Uh, so even places where we haven't explicitly shown it, um, that English and Spanish is available for all content, um, but most specifically, any of that family-facing content is always our first priority. Uh, okay, so as a quick recap, as we think about these areas, where we are so far, um, the library area, that's where I suggested you hop in first and just start to ground yourself in the kind of resources that are now available to you as part of THL. Um, then the teacher is where you can start adding some of those experiences into your plans, searching by Texas pre-kindergarten guidelines or adding a study um, to start using um, the resources more holistically. Then we jumped all the way over to the other end to look at the family area where Tim showed this two-way communication back and forth as well as all of the the resources that you have we only have so much time today so we highlighted that home guided learning plans but as you can see there's additional resources here of photos that you can send and recipes and additional learning game activities so there's a really rich collection of content that you can use to share here um assess and report or two we're not really going to talk about today um because we want to kind of guide you into getting started so in our training in january we'll talk a lot more about how you can start leveraging and building out portfolios for children. Once you start having that data, we can talk about the reports that will be helpful. Um, so feel free if you want to, to play around in there, but I would suggest you maybe even hold back a little until we can help guide you through um, some of those impacts when we have further training. Um, but the last piece we did want to highlight for you was that develop area. Um, because as you do jump in and start to explore, this is where we house all of our online professional development. So here you'll find hours and hours um, of content to just support teachers um, in using these tools specifically, specific to Creative Curriculum Cloud for Texas, to gold specifically, um, to then product agnostic topics like 
getting ready for studies um, or um, stronger partnerships with family. So there's a really wide collection of professional development here. We've partnered with TEA uh, and the THL initiative to think of really targeted professional development to start here in mid-January, which we think is going to be customized and kind of curated to getting you started in a meaningful way there. But wanted you to know what's behind this tab in case you're um, jumping in and exploring around there as part of uh, the THL contract. You do have access to all of the, the content that we have to support um, the pre-kindergarten work. All right, so I think that was everything we wanted to show in the system. We've got a couple of wrap up and next step slides that we want to hop into next. So we just threw a lot at you and I talk fast. So it's even twice as much as like another person would have walked you through in a half an hour. Uh, so I appreciate uh, you hanging in there for us, but the comprehensive nature of what TEA is committed to do here for pre-K is really powerful. Um, and I just wanna reiterate that let's look at that as a positive and not walk away from this feeling overwhelmed. <laughs> uh, but with a comprehensive curriculum, a comprehensive assessment solution and a rich professional development library, uh, it's really to have all of your bases covered. Um, but I hope that you walk away from this conversation feeling empowered to start tackling some of those pain points that you're feeling the most right now. So if you're looking for more content to brighten up and add some new experiences to your virtual learning, check out those intentional teaching experiences in Mighty Minutes. If you're struggling for even just a couple families to give them some curated specific content because they're not being able to join asynchronous learning as much as you'd like, check out those at-home guided learning plans. If you're just interested in learning more about the objectives and progressions and what they look like, there's professional development for that. I challenge you to think about through the thousands of resources basically we were putting in your fingertips when you um, log in here, um, we will absolutely walk you through starting in mid-January our suggestions of how to use these resources most appropriately and most comprehensively. But what was most important to me and the team at Teaching Strategies was that you feel supported um, to jump in and start exploring um, as Folks moved a lot to get this um, in your hands before um, we break for holidays. Not that I want folks working over holiday and winter breaks, um, but if you're like me, I know your brain doesn't turn off. Um, and if you are excited and looking for some new support and resources, we wanted to make sure that was available to you. Um, so now let's talk about some next steps of how you get in and start exploring. Uh, so you can access the materials now, as Tamala said at the beginning of the call, at the texashomelearning.org site. You're gonna to wanna to navigate either by subject or by grade level and look for that integrated pre-K solution. You're gonna to wanna to access materials, which is gonna take you to teachingstrategies.com forward slash Texas. And there you're just gonna to wanna to go to, I just pointed to it like you can see my finger. Um, you're gonna to wanna to sign up now uh, on the middle of the screen there where you're gonna be prompted to, give, to fill out an information form for us, which is the next slide. So there's an information form here of just some vital um, information that we need to get you set up. And then once you've complete that form, which we've already gotten some folks that have already signed up, which is exciting. Um, within 24 hours, uh, we'll be able to provide you the credentials that you need to, to jump in and, and get started in the system. Uh, if you need additional assistance, especially knowing we're not jumping into our more comprehensive webinar series until um, a little bit later in January, there's a support portal uh, that you can absolutely go in and explore um, and learn a little bit more about the system, um, as well as I mentioned that first webinar that we've already done um, for this group. And then lastly, I'll just, if you wanna to go to one more slide, Robin or, yep, um, at this teachingstrategies.com Texas page is a dedicated page for just our Texas initiatives. Um, so here you'll find opportunities to dig a little deeper into our approach and the different resources that we provide, uh, as well as some other recorded webinars that we've done on topics uh, and uh, even some things outside of Texas specific content, but places where we've been um, interacting with the fields related to distance learning and studies and things like that. Um, so definitely check out that site and see the additional resources we have there to support you as well. So with that, Tamala, I will turn it over um, to you, back to you. Awesome. Thank you, Brianne. What a lot of information. As you can see, this is very comprehensive. 
And if you're feeling a tad overwhelmed, remember what we want you to do within the next couple of weeks is to play around. Just like Brianne said, look at the things that interest you and play around with it. In mid-January, we will have, led by teaching strategies, a five-part training sessions that um, will each be 90 minutes long. You can look at the topics there on the slide. So we will dig deeper into all of the things that Brian did very rapidly today. And again, that will be in mid-January. Registration is not available right now, but will be very soon. You want to keep going back to texashomelearning.org and sign up, especially for the newsletter, because that will give you the latest updates. And then the last thing I think we're going to share with you before we get to questions and answers, um, we are joined by another colleague, Brian, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and he's going to tell you about an exciting opportunity to be in a pilot. Great. Thanks, Tamela. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brian Doran. I am also on the instructional strategy team. Um, and I wanted to highlight an opportunity that we have opening up, uh, currently open actually, uh, depending on how you're looking at implementing, if you're looking at implementing teaching strategies, um, we have a pilot opportunity for some districts if you are interested in piloting one unit um, over the course of this spring, um, where we would also provide uh, free access to additional professional learning supports, um, extra materials like printed pilot units and trade books, as well as stipends for teachers and school level admin who are providing support uh, throughout the course of the pilot. Um, we have this actually available for not just teaching strategies, but for other core products with Texas Home Learning as well. Um, but particularly with pre-K, um, we think this is a great fit and great opportunity for folks. Um, I know we had one question in there kind of uh, asking about if this was re a required portion of Texas Home Learning. This is a completely separate support for, for districts. Um, and a separate application process. Um, so uh, this is just purely if you are interested in piloting a unit um, and, and receiving some additional support along the way. Uh, so we have a website there on the bottom right of your screen, texashomelearning.org slash crimsy. So this is the COVID recovery instruction, instructional materials support initiative, affectionately called crimsy. Um, and uh, so I encourage you to go to that website to learn more about Crimsy itself. We have a, an application uh, as well as a, a general overview. Additionally, we'll have a couple um, webinar opportunities coming up. One is actually tomorrow uh, at 11 a.m. Central, um, but we also have some uh, after the break. Um, and so you, you will find links to that on the um, Crimsy webpage there at Texas Home Learning. Um, we'll also have an opportunity for product specific office hours where we'll break in, um, have different breakout groups for you to be able to ask questions of uh, the, the product vendors. Um, and then finally, just a last opportunity to, to engage here of um, if you are interested and, and would like to have someone reach out to you, let us know um, with, at the link on the bottom left of your screen. That's bit.ly slash crimsy dash interest dash form. Um, and we'll have someone reach out to you and, and um, kind of talk through the, the initiative. That is awesome. What a great opportunity. Well, we want to end our time together with some questions and answers. And so I was going through all the Q and A's while you all were typing and listening at the same time. And I have a couple that um, I'm hoping um, our, our teaching strategy friends can maybe address a little more. There were several questions about teaching different age levels. Um, one in particular has a mixed age classroom or how would we use this to differentiate our pre-K three from our pre-K four? Can you kind of address that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so all of our resources, because of that progression, are really designed for the preschool 
three pre-K four space. Um, so we, you know, we're targeting here for the pre-K four um, initiatives in Texas. And when we think about those Texas pre-kindergarten guidelines, but just at its core, how the creative curriculum for preschool um, was designed nationally was to know that there are there's a lot of overlap in what development looks like for three and four year olds. And the research says actually starting in twos, we actually have studies for twos now um, that twos, threes, fours, and so on that, you know, play-based project-based investigations are the most powerful way um, for children to build these positive approaches to learning and these process skills and critical thinking needed for future school success. So I would say if you have a preschool three, pre-K four program, there is no reason why you don't just implement these studies with both of those children in that mixed Stage class and then just use those teaching sequences um, to individualize your more direct instruction uh, so that you the green color band is what's going to represent typically developing widely held expectations for three-year-olds um, but we also as educators know that every three-year-old is different and you're gonna have three-year-olds whose skills are at the blue color band and you're gonna have pre-k four children whose skills are at the yellow color band and that's why we always want to give that full visibility uh, so that it makes that individualization that much easier. You will have the first time you do studies, if children haven't been exposed to that, it doesn't matter if they're three or four or five, they may have trouble articulating questions to their ideas, right? So no matter what age you're starting this work, those first that first couple weeks of a study, it's gonna be reframing their statements into questions. You're probably gonna need to do that a little more for three-year-olds than you are four-year-olds. Um, but those kinds of things, as I mentioned in the water study, we have those as professional development tips offered each day. Uh, so I would say preschool three, pre-K four, no problem. It's actually how it's intended um, to be implemented. And then for those of you, it's not offered within THL, but for programs who are also serving those toddlers and twos, like someone said, they even had 18 month olds that they're interacting with. We do have separate solutions that we'd love to talk to you about that are targeted specific for those, those age groups as well. Um, but in particular for twos, still, still rooted in studies just with the equal focus on responsive caregiving and routines. Awesome. Awesome. Can you do the same kind of reflection on children that are not English speaking, so they're English learners, and dig a little more deeper into what resources are available, and also um, children that might have a special need or a, um, a dis an identified disability? Can you dig a little deeper into that, Brianne? Absolutely, Tamala. And this is such an important topic that if you, you go back to the five topics, this is like a whole dedicated 90 minute webinar. So I'll do my best to answer it in a couple of brief <laughs> moments, but we have a whole dedicated session on that training schedule just to focus on um, some of these special populations and how we support them. Um, but in a lot of ways, my answer is going to be similar, Tamala, that it comes to this idea of progressions of development. No four-year-old is the same. <laughs> um, so whether it's English language learners, a special education services, a developmental delay, an advanced learner, um, every child that is coming to us, skills are going to be somewhere different on that progression. Um, so just the very nature of thinking about instruction as whole child and thinking about it as a progression instead of just a targeted point um, allows us to be freed up as educators to be more responsive, especially if I'm using the curriculum and assessment at the same time, then it's saving some of those steps for me as educator, honestly, because a child who may need additional support and services in one area may accelerate in others. And it's a way to seamlessly start to see that in the system as I build a portfolio. Um, so we didn't talk much about the foundation volumes um, because I didn't want to throw too much at you. <laughs> but with this question, I, I do want to highlight that in that digital content library, we have six foundation volumes that really dig into the theory and practice related to high quality pre-kindergarten instruction. Um, we worked with a dual language uh, specialist um, to really revisit that content and make sure we had the most recent thinking in there for Texas. Uh, same thing with special education. Uh, every one of those intentional teaching experiences had has adaptations for including all children and call outs for um, strategies that honestly might best serve multiple children, um, but specifically can be targeted to um, English language learners or um, children with um, disabilities and special needs as well. Um, so 
so you'll notice it very formally in foundation volumes. You can use the search feature and actually just search for it to see all the places we talk about it. But you'll also see it daily on intentional teaching experiences and embedded professional development call out boxes. Um, but we'll awesome. dig much more in depth um, in that training series. That's awesome. One um, uh, participant has asked about would this be appropriate to use for summer school? Yes. So can you, yeah, <laughs> I, I know this is extremely flexible, but can you address those kinds of? Yeah, um, I think, um, so options. a couple things when I think about summer. Um, so we, we've been talking about studies um, anytime we've been talking about a teaching guide, but there also are two other teaching guides. There's one on the first six weeks, building your classroom community. And there's another one on getting ready for kindergarten. So those really bookends your year of study topics. So I'm sorry, I'm at my parents' house and they have a very happy dog who's excited to have a delivery. Um, <laughs> we made it almost the whole way through. Uh, but this uh, these two bookend teaching guides, if I were thinking about a summer program, I would think about our children transitioning into a pre-K environment, or are they transitioning into kindergarten, and pulling some of those elements from that first six weeks. It's how do I make and keep friends? What do I do if I'm upset or scared? <laughs> what are our rules? Like Those are great things in a summer program, especially if your summer program is serving children who maybe are qualifying for additional services or haven't had exposure to a school setting before. Um, those can be really powerful things to start setting up, even though they'll have a slightly different classroom community um, when they transition into their, their fall setting. Um, it'd be great to lay some of that foundational work. And then I also think water. It's a four-week study. Um, water's fun in the summer. It's refreshing. It gets us outside. Um, so if I were thinking about planning for a summer program, depending on how long it is, I would think about pulling in components of first six weeks, as well as that, that water study. Perfect. Perfect. And all of this is available in Spanish. Every single thing. Um, again, it's sort of one of those uh, table stakes like the alignment wow. to Texas Free Kindergarten Guidelines. We, we wouldn't be invited to play at this party if we weren't committed to having um, everything for Texas uh, translated to Spanish. Awesome. And, and trans adapted too, which I think I, I spoke about briefly, but that's something that we hold ourselves accountable to um, and have dedicated editorial teams and writers that think about not just translating the song into Spanish, but what's the tune and rhyme. When we think about emergent writing, you'll see we have Spanish language literacy objectives. Uh, we know emergent writing in English starts with a lot of consonants. Emergent writing in Spanish is a lot of vowel sounds and our writing samples for teachers and our strategies and suggestions need to look different and, and they do. And hopefully you'll find that as you get in and start exploring. There was a question um, about signing up um, to be able to review the materials. And, oh, excuse me, I must be having a delivery also. <laughs> it's that time um, of year. Present it's the delivery <laughs> time, yeah. Um, I apologize. But um, there was a question, I believe, from an administrator. Should an administrator sign up? for their whole campus or should each teacher do it? How would you all prefer? That is a great question and I should be able to answer that specifically and I'm nervous that I'm not qualified to answer that. Um, so that might be something that we wanna follow up with some specifics. We absolutely want administrators in the system um, because we want you exploring and seeing what this content is, but I'm not familiar enough with how the license are being set up um, for this piece and Tim, Tim and I are actually delivering another national webinar in three minutes. Um, so he jumped off to get that started so I can just jump on and start presenting. Um, so I'm gonna have to follow up on the logistics um, of that, but I would say sign up um, for sure. And then we can help figure out um, each or unless Robin or, or someone else from TEA can, can answer how we have that mapped out for access. All righty. Well, I know we did not get to all of your questions and um, we love it that you have lots and lots of questions. And um, Robin, I'm going to ask you to help me. How are we going to be able to get the answers to these questions? Would those be um, put on our frequently asked questions area on the website? Hey, Tamela. Yes, um, we are working on a pre-K focused 
frequently asked questions. So know that all of the th wonderful questions you have submitted through the Q&A should also show up there. Um, and as we have answers to some of these, we will also try to include them in the pre-K newsletter. Um, so if you have not already signed up uh, through the texashomelearning.org website for the, the newsletter, please do so. Awesome, great, thank you. Um, do know that this um, slide deck and the recording are going to be posted as quickly as we can get it on the texashomelearning.org website. So be watching for that. Make sure you sign up so that you can get the opportunity to move around these um, great resources and be watching for um, those um, upcoming trainings that will be done in January. We are really, really, really glad that you joined us today. Hopefully this was informative and um, we hope that we whet your appetite so that you'll have some fun in accessing all these great resources. Thank you and have a great rest of the day. Bye everyone.